Um, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, welcome to the academic uh, seminar on the human uh, psychology when in dispute. This is at the African International Mediation Week, day four, which is the third day of December 2020. We commence this particular session uh, by reciting the words of the Kenyan National Anthem in English. O oh God of all creation, bless this our land and nation. Justice be our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace, and liberty. Plenty be found within our borders. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again. This is the academic seminar on the human psychology when in dispute. Our facilitator for this particular session is uh, Mrs. Mary Otieno. Uh, Mary Otieno is a clinical psychologist. She is also a trained mediator, a student counselor, dean of students, and works at the University of Nairobi Kisumu campus. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, everyone. How are you? We are well, at least I am. Thank you very much. Uh, we are happy to have you uh, today. Uh, take us through this topic. Welcome. Thank you very much for the invite. Allow me to share my screen so that we move along together. Please proceed. Great. So today we're going to talk a little bit about um, why uh, we should not have ground rules when we are in mediation. And uh, I would like this to be a very um, engaging conversation. So I'm not going to give a talk. I think uh, it's, it's better for us, for us to have a back and forth. So we're going to start off uh, with a little icebreaker and then I'll talk about uh, the mediator in the session. And then uh, I will go ahead and uh, look at what is it that resides in our heads. Then look at what resides in our hearts. And uh, does the heart know more than the head? Then we'll go down and uh, briefly look at, uh, so which one takes precedence when we're in mediation? And then look at other dimensions and how as a mediator you'd optimize your service delivery when you're in session. So the first uh, exercise we're going to do together is um, just look at uh, what you're wearing. Maybe you dressed up in the morning and you don't remember what you're wearing, eh? But can you just tell a little, a short story about what you're wearing today. I don't know how you want us to go through that. Uh, we can have volunteers, or maybe um, Sarah could pick on someone to tell us something little about what they're wearing. Um, thank you. Uh, participants are, are free to type into the chat. Uh, uh, I will, uh, as a wait for people to type into the chat, I think I will perhaps uh, pick uh, Mr. Givai, would you like to tell us something about what you're wearing? Or Wangari, could you tell us something about what you're wearing? And then we come back to Mr. Givai. Yes, um, I am. I am very happy to tell you about yes what I am wearing. I don't know if you want the one that can be seen or the ones. Okay, so <laughs> the, the one that's in the public. Eh? Okay, so I'm wearing yellow, and uh, I've actually just put in the chat. And uh, because today my, I was starting my day with conversations about money, and uh, we, we we had our first session on the financial industry, uh, dispute resolution center, and. For me, uh, the, what, what occurred at that point, at that time was, 
um, the, the dream that we actually have for the financial industry, we actually say in our strategy that uh, give more joyful experiences in access to financial services in Kenya and a model for Africa. So for me, the yellow, and I think I, when I look at your presentation, there's also, there's actually yellow. Uh, right now I'm seeing yellow. So I think I also knew that uh, I would be coming to a yellow presentation now, but for me, it's the, the vibrancy that I was seeing uh, in the, uh, or I, I see the great opportunity for the financial industry through use of uh, alternative ways of managing, preventing, and also uh, mitigation of disputes. That's, yes, that's why I'm yellow today. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm wearing uh, um, this uh, pink cuff and I just love the way it looks on me. Um, yes, that's why I'm wearing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I? Anyone else? Yes. yes. I'm wearing a gray dress. Now, for me, the color is not so much a problem because I wear gray every day. What is different is whether I choose to wear a skirt or a dress. And today I'm in a dress because I like to feel free. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Another participant? OK, maybe you can just type in and then we'll go through them. So what has come out very uh, clearly, and that's very good, eh? Wangari says she's wearing yellow today. And for her, she's, she was looking forward to joyful experiences. Now, when our clients come in for sessions, eh, at the end of the day, they expect to come out with a joyful experience. They expect to resolve their uh, conflicts. They expect to maybe get back together if they were not in talking terms. So that's a good thing, Wangari. I think it's important for you to be very, very conscious of what you're wearing as a mediator when you're going into the session, because you never know how your client is going to interpret your look. And then Sarah says she is wearing pink because she just loves it and she loves the way she looks. So when I come into session as a client, uh, at the end of it, I would want to feel good about myself. I would want to really love the way, you know, everything turns out, love the way probably how I look. When I have an issue, a lot of times, maybe I am so low down, eh? so the look doesn't really, really matter to me. But the mediator takes me through and makes me look at myself and again, learn to love the way I look. And then the third participant, sorry, I didn't get your name, eh? but you said you like wearing gray and gray is your usual color. And today you're wearing a dress because you want to feel free. Now that's mediation. When you go into mediation, at the end of it, you want to be free. You want to, you know, remove the bucket that you have, resolve your issues and feel free again. So that's, that's a good way to begin. And that's a good way to think about me as a mediator and how I handle my clients. So let's look at uh, who the mediator is. So whenever we have uh, clients come into session, what we really need to focus on is to be able to facilitate their communication. We have two parties that are, uh, have disputes, but at the end of the day, we want to have these parties to be able to understand each other and to be able to perceive the issues that they have in a positive manner. Secondly, as a mediator, my main duty is actually to encourage the parties. Now, why am I encouraging the parties? They come into my room, they come into mediation because they do not understand each other's perspective. So as I encourage them to recognize what the other person is thinking, what the other person is going through, then that way they will be able to also uh, accept their responsibility in this dispute. And then thirdly, as a mediator, we just need to encourage these people to tell stories. Imagine you're in a room with uh, two parties and everyone is quiet. How does that go? So as a mediator, you really have to find ways of, you know, uh, really creating a good environment in the room for me as a person in dispute to be able to talk to Sarah, to be able to tell my story to Sarah, to be able to tell my story to Wangari and also be able to listen. 
to what the other party has to say. And in mediation, the mediator assists in resolving those issues. Now, uh, what I want to go through as a, a person in dispute, I want to go through a season in my life where I've worked with the mediator and I'm able to come out and look at the future positively. So the mediator is there to guide me. The mediator is there to work with me. The mediator is there to assist me to be able to look at my future with a lot of positivity. And then I would like to say that most of the times when you're in dispute, you tend to look at uh, all the bad things that are happening around you. You tend to magnify your weaknesses. But uh, if the mediator is aware and is able to pick that out, then they are able to help you as a client identify your strengths and then also help you apply those strengths within the mediation and beyond the mediation. And also something that is very, very key, the mediator should work with people and just be able to help them focus on the solutions that they come up with. Now, problems are a good thing because problems form part of our experiences, but they should not be the main thing. So as you work with your clients, just encourage them to look at the solution, learn from their mistakes, learn from their past, but do not get stuck, do not remain focused on the problems that they had in the past. So now as a mediator, it's important for you to understand yourself so that you're able to help your clients. So to be able to understand yourself, you really need to think through what is it that resides in my mind as a mediator. And the mind is basically about thoughts. And our thoughts uh, really, really impact on our behavior. It impacts on our emotions. So if I am aware of my thoughts, then when I go into the mediation room, then I will understand that um, there are certain things that I think about that could be similar to what the client is going through. And if that plays into what uh, I'm going through during the mediation, then fear will set in. When fear sets in and you are the mediator, then you start giving excuses. You start thinking that, oh, okay, it's fine. Um, maybe these people are acting the way they're acting and that's the right way to act. So you do not, you're not able to be very, very objective in what you're doing. So understand that within your head resides your thoughts and your thoughts may play into how you handle a matter. You really have to also understand that within your head resides the way you analyze issues. And you also look at uh, how do I handle things? You know, do I, I am, am I that kind of person who looks at logic and am I fixated in a particular way of handling matters? So understand that their thoughts, analysis and logic in my head. So that really plays in as I handle my clients. Now the heart also plays a very, very big role in my life as a mediator. Now the heart is where that little voice that guides us all resides in. That intuition, the fact that, you know, I have to go through something and this is the best way for me to handle issues. So the true self resides in the heart. Unfortunately, you really, really have to be intentional to be able to hear what your heart has to say. A lot of times we move with what, uh, you know, the head tells us, but you really have to listen. You really have to be quiet. You really have to move back and be able to finally hear what is it that my heart is telling me? Why should I do things in a certain way? Is that what the heart tells me? And then thirdly, the heart, we say, and the head kind of work you know, side by side. They operate in different ways. They speak different languages, but they work side by side. So you cannot say that I'm going to shut out my thoughts. I'll simply go with the, what the heart says. I'll simply go with intuition. No, that cannot work. You have to realize that uh, at a point, let me sit back, listen to what the heart says, but also understand what the head is telling me. Now, uh, I will just quote uh, John's there, and he says that the head is really, really big, but the heart is infinitely more powerful. So what we see, when I look at you, I will see, oh, Mary has a really, really big head. Eh? And um, I don't know, a lot of us from the African culture, 
we had issues and uh, lots of comments from the elderly people and they would uh, sort of throw insults at you and you know you have a big head you have uh, you know all those funny things they would say to us so then when you come into you know mediation and someone is telling you that you really really have to take into consideration what that head has inside and you still remember that that voice of that person who used to really insult you so you have to you have a lot of work to do on yourself as a mediator before you help other people you must look at things critically you must look at your own issues because your own issues a lot of times will play into how you handle other people's issues and your issues need to be resolved so if you have a lot of baggage on you then you may not be able to help people in mediation now the other dimension that uh, a lot of us uh, will say someone tells you that i feel okay there's this gut feeling. And usually a lot of us have a very, very powerful, a very, very high gut feeling. We tend to ignore it sometimes, but we shouldn't ignore it uh, most of the time. It's that instinct, okay? So you're moving in a certain direction. You have parties in mediation. They have told their stories. You have read what they have to say about each other. But there's something else that is telling you, there's that instinct that, okay, this may not be the true story. This may not be resolved in the direction that we want to take it. Can we take a step back? Can we look at it again and then move forward from there? So what I'm trying to say is uh, as a mediator, it is not uh, a good thing to rush to close your matters. You need to give it sufficient time you need to look at all the angles that there are to that matter. It's better to take a little bit more time than rush the matter, close it. And then once you have closed the matter, the parties will come back to you and uh, or go elsewhere and complain that, well, I signed, I agreed to this because the mediator was pushing me. And sometimes we do this uh, without being conscious. We push people because we're handling a matter that um, really hits us uh, in the wrong place. Maybe I have an issue that is very, very close to what uh, the parties bring. Now, the best thing that uh, you could do, you could refer or you have a mentor as a mediator, okay? Talk to your mentor, speak with your mentor, just discuss the issue with the mentor and look at what is it that you're able to do? What is it that you're able to handle? If you really cannot handle it, then you can request to have someone else handle the matter instead of you. So that third dimension is important. What is that instinct? I'm going to close a matter fine, but there's something that is really not adding up. What can I do about it? Shouldn't I do something about, about it right away rather than just assuming? So to optimize your service, your service delivery, and uh, you impact a lot of lives by being a mediator. So to impact on these uh, groups that you're handling, to optimize your service, you really need to use the three. We really need to, I need to use my head, yes because I need to apply some logic, I need to apply some reasoning, I need to be rational when I'm handling my clients. But at the same time, I need to follow my heart. So what is the heart uh, all about? There are certain emotions that come with the issues of the heart. So I also need to listen to what my heart has to say. And then thirdly, listen to your gut. What is that intuition? When you listen to your gut, what, what happens is you're able to act faster. You're able, most of the time, to be more accurate in what you're doing. You're able to be more confident and you end up coming, with, coming up with you know, very, very good decisions. So do not uh, ignore the gut feeling. Use your head, follow your heart, but also listen to your gut as you're working with clients. Now, um, a professor at Harvard Law School 
had a quote that I would like to uh, repeat to us as a mediator and the central theme or the central quality of mediation is for you to be able to reorient the parties towards each other. When they come with disputes, sometimes you find people coming into a room and they don't even want to look at each other. So as a mediator, at the end of it all, you will have worked towards orienting them. And when you orient them towards each other, they are able to listen to each other. They are able to look at each other's perspective. They are able to understand where one is coming from and how probably the issue came about. And secondly, as a mediator in the mediation room, do not impose uh, rules on people. It's, it's important to have rules as we know it when you're starting the mediation process. But then as you go through, then you understand your clients because each set of clients is not the same as the other. So you will need to work with a set of rules for one set of clients, but change the kind of rules that you have for a different group of clients. So never impose any rule on anyone because if you do that, then the outcome is not going to be good. The clients can decide to shut and you will be going round and round and round circles without coming up with a breakthrough. And then thirdly, another key to mediation is to help people achieve a new, new perspective of the relationship they had. So if, if there was a family dispute, for instance, and uh, people looked at each other like, um, We'll never sit in the same room. We'll never have this uh, family meeting. We will never, you know, do things together. But as a mediator, you're able to help these people to achieve a different perspective. Let them understand that fine, we have disagreed on a matter, but that doesn't mean we cannot continue as family. We need to work together as family. We need to do those things that uh, we intended to do as family. We need to share what we, we used to share as a uh, as family. So your, your business as a mediator is just to get people back together. Work with those relationships. And if you have not sorted out your own relationships, then I'm sorry to say that is going to really, really interfere with the way you handle our relationships. Because you we tend to go back to those books that are in our, you know, in our libraries. Eh? So I handled this uh, in one way. I had a dispute with Bangare. This is how I handled it. This is how I, it ended up. Eh? So if you have not been able to separate between your personal issues, your private issues with what you're handling, then you're not going to be able to handle your clients. So it's, it's important to remember that find the client is the most important person whenever you're doing any work. So work towards or orienting them. If my issues are interfering with the way I handle, let me step back, let me take time, let me understand myself and let me do what is best. So for a mediator, again, it is important to be self-aware. So in terms of self-awareness, you're just thinking about, do I know what my traits are? Do I understand how I behave in certain situations? Do I understand what kind of feelings uh, that I have, depending on what matter comes to my attention. Now, feelings are things that um, we are not used to naming, but it's important for us to start naming those feelings that we have. So when you name your feelings, then you will, you will say, okay, today I'm feeling sad. Today I'm feeling um, angry. And I'm not feeling angry about the clients that come in. I just have my own issues. So name your feeling, understand your feeling, go into the mediation space and work with your clients without your feelings and uh, interfering with your clients. Then how do I usually behave? Okay, do I jump into you know people's matters? Because that happens if that's my behavior then I need to train myself. If I cannot train myself, I need to have someone to be able to train me to understand and to work and change my behavior. So basically that, that is uh, the little bit uh, that I have for us as mediators for today. There's a lot more that uh, needs to be talked about, needs to be discussed in the mediation for a mediation or for a mediator to work and be able to be very, very effective in their space.
Thank you, Sarah. Back to you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mary, for being able to take us through uh, that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I believe we are absorbing what we have been able to engage in this morning, just uh, being able to see some of the things that the mediator has to be aware of and alert to as they go into the mediation process. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this has been our morning session, uh, our academic uh, seminar on the human psych psychology when in dispute. We have been taken through this particular session by Mary Otieno, who is a clinical psychologist, a student counselor, and a dean of students at the University of Nairobi Kisumu campus. Uh, we would like to remind you that uh, the next uh, session is the after party, which is coming up at uh, 8 p.m. today. Uh, we'll, we will be able to close this particular session by being able to recite uh, the words of the national anthem in English. Oh God, of all creation, bless this our land and nation. Justice be our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace, and liberty. Plenty be found within our borders. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much. Uh, for your participation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, facilitator, for taking us through. And uh, we look forward to having you at uh, the rest of the African International Mediation Week uh, uh, sessions. And the next session will be at 8 p.m. today. Thank you.